welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am Tony Green, the Psychic Medium. For those of you who are new, welcome to the show. For everybody returning, happy to have you back. Um, I'm going to go over very quickly just a few little um, PSA, PDA, P something A comments. Okay. So the first one is this show airs live on television, WSCS and Rude Rangers TV. They stream it out to all of their channels. Please remember that when you're asking questions. <laughs> yes. Second, if you would like to join the show live, I would love to have you here live with us. I go live every Monday and Wednesday at noon central time. And um, you can join us via YouTube where we record the show. You can join the chat where everybody is talking as we as I'm uh, recording and airing. Or you can call in and the call in number is 845-277-9100. Three, one. When you call in, you can ask questions about your life, love, career, finances, any aspect of your life at all that you want to ask about. Um, and I, just on that note, I will never reach out to anybody on social media um, or any place else. I do not reach out to people and tell them, hey, you need a reading. You need this. I don't, especially not on social media. Those are scammers. Please don't get scammed. Okay. It's really important that you don't get scammed. If you do have, if you're joining us live and you have a question and you're on YouTube, you can post that question in the chat. Otherwise, if you are joining us live in YouTube, you can also call in the, the call-in number for the show, 845-277-9131. Now, that is just for the show. If you want um, a private session, the best way to contact me is um, on my website, which is tonig.info. Alrighty. I want to thank everybody in the chat. We have Mimi here, Heather, Fawn, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Mimi, Fawn, Heather, um, Sal. Hey, Sal. How are you? Um, Kate is here. Happy Monday, Kate. As people come in, I will try to see them and say hello. Uh, I'm going to get started with calls. But before I get start, started on the calls, I just I want to ask everybody in the chat. There's two channelings that have been coming through, and I only want to do one of them today. So the first one is about relationships and um, magic. I know who would have thought I would ever have to address that. And the second one is about um, people who do things here. And when we feel like we don't see their karma or they get to live a happy life, what happens to them? Okay, call out. What do you want me to talk about on the show? Um, I'm going to do the first caller and I will wait for responses in the chat on that. And if you don't want me to talk about either, and we'll just let all that go. Um, when I call your area code, I would, I'm getting, I am getting magic karma, magic karma. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go to 415. When I call your area code, please give me your name and where you're calling from. And then uh, have an exact question or loved one that you would like to connect with. 415, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Tony. It's Kate in Colorado. Hey, Kate. How are you today? Good. It's nice and sunny and warm today. And um, all weekend, I was thinking about my Auntie Nan. And her name is Nancy and went by Nan. And she has a message for me. Yeah. Um, the first thing, uh, you know, Kate, it's so funny. All the messages that I get for you are along the same lines, no matter who brings it through. And so her very first message for you is keep going. Just keep going. Um, yeah. Grow whatever it is you're doing, grow it. Okay. 
Expe oh, okay. Oh, okay. I like that. What, whatever it is, grow it. And then the next thing that she would want to oh. say to you is, we, we all love you. We're all working with you. We just want you to have the life that oh. you want. So whatever it is you want to do, dig in and grow it. Yeah. Okay? And that would be her message for you. Great. Excellent. Kate. Thank you. No, thank All you. Right. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm so grateful for that. Thanks for the message. Absolutely. My pleasure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So I, uh, 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 I'm looking at the chat and I have more requests for people who want to know about it. Uh, now, this isn't magic in general. It's magic with relationships like love relationships. Okay, so a lot of people call me and they want to know if I can do magic on somebody that they have lost or has broken up with them to keep that, to bring the person back and to keep the relationship going. That is a solid no. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Never use magic for anybody else's life. And for so many reasons. And I'm going to just do this very quickly. Even if you meet somebody that says, well, I can help make them come back, just do this or I'll do this. What you're doing first and foremost is going against a person's free will, but you're also going against the agreements they made prior to coming in. Did you all see that flash of light? Did you all see that flash of light? Did you? Before we come in, millennials ago, we wrote a book, and in this book, we have made agreements of certain things we will accomplish in this life and certain people we will be with and not be with. When we try to manipulate the outcome of things, that's magic, as it pertains to another person, we are changing their free will, but we're also changing our agreements and their agreements that were made prior to coming in. Now, I know breakups can be tough. I know they can be very difficult, but never, ever use magic to get somebody that you want or keep somebody who has walked away. And I'm going to tell everybody a little bitty story. It's a true story. I had a client who shall go nameless, who used magic a lot. You could see it on her. People who use magic, they don't look like they're of the light. They don't. They look really unhappy if they're using manipulative dark magic. This person confessed to me or said to me that she used magic to get and keep the person she was with. Now, here's the thing about her relationship. And this is so important, whether you're comfortable with this topic or not. And magic can be something as simple as praying, whatever. Well, I'm not going to go into that. He cheated on her through the whole relationship and gave her an STD. Now, because she used magic to get him and keep him, when she would ask me about him, I couldn't see into that because already there was such a dark veil over it. There was already such a dark veil cast over that relationship from what she had used to get him. Never, ever let anyone else and never, ever do that on your own because what comes of it is just so bad for everybody involved. And it changes the path. You just have to have faith 
that whatever is meant for you, whoever is meant for you, they are coming in and you will be with them. Okay, that's my little thing on magic and relationships. Now, I know some people want to know what if people use magic against you? Well, first and foremost, my understanding is a piece of their soul goes um, as a piece of their soul is compromised every time they use or do magic. And whatever somebody puts out, it's just the law of attraction, the law of nature, the law of everything. Whatever somebody puts out, eventually it comes back to them. The energy they try to put somebody in is the energy they will eventually end up in. That's why they say only think and wish good things on people. And if you can't think or wish good things on people, don't even think about them. Take them so far out of your view. Okay, that's all I have to say on that subject. I'm going to go to the very next caller. Um Yep, I'm going to the very next caller. A couple more people have joined us. Um, Sally, hey, Anne, hey. Um, I'm going to go to 856. 856, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, it's first Maria. Hey, Maria. From New Jersey. Hey, Maria. How are you? I just had a... I dream that like a shocking, like a light going through me. So I was wondering what's the message from spirit or I guess about a relationship. I'm not sure okay. what that all about, if that makes sense. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to say I don't know the whole content or context of the dream. Light going through you during a dream. I am not a, a, a dream analyzer at all i'm even with my own dreams i don't know what they mean i'm gonna say that but anytime light if it's good light coming through us i'm going to presume it's angels working on our behalf that's my assumption presumption um but as far as it would analyzing a dream oh gosh girly i am the worst person but everybody in the chat will tell you that you can google dreams all day long you can google light going through you in a dream like going through you it what does it mean for a relationship what does it mean for a change in life what does it mean and, and google will have all those answers and there are many books written by people uh, who do dream analysis. Now, this is what I'm personally going to say about your dreams. If it's a good dream, it's what you want in life. If it's not a good dream, it's your fears or or what you're afraid of in life. If it's a dream um, that is about the past, it's something healing. Those, those are just my things. Our dreams are our subconscious mind doing one of a couple of things, healing us or helping us or showing us our fears. That is my basic breakdown of our dreams. Because when we finally rest our entire body and our mind can really work and show us or try to work out what's going on for us, it will happen sometimes in our sleep. So I would say light going through your body. And again, I don't have the context. Is it a lightning bolt? Was it a stream of light? Did it just go through and leave a surging hole? I don't know. What I'm going to say is, you know, on some level what that dream means. It's either something you are praying for to leave or something you're praying to come in. Okay, that is my best thing. And I'm sorry, I cannot do better with your dream. I'm so, so sorry for that. Thank you. You are welcome. I I will tell you, I know I muted you and I'm sorry I muted you um, so early, but I'm going to tell you this. Um, st just stick with me for another second here. I feel like that lightning, that light that went through your body, whatever it is, it's, it's prophetic. It's, if I'm asking spirit, what is that? It's something prophetic that you've been asking for, but it's not going to show up the way you've been asking for it to show up. I know. I'm sorry. You're going to know when it does, though. You're going to know when it does. I'm going to go to 585. 585, what's your name and where are you calling from? 
Hi, Tony. My name is Jamie, and I'm calling from New York. Hey there. How can I help you? And my Tony? question is about uh, my question, Tony, is about my love life. Could you see someone coming in? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm going to ask if mm -hmm. you have. It's the phone sounds a little gargled, so if you could just. Um, Kind of put the phone to your face. It might be better. If it's already to your face, I apologize for that. Um, do I see somebody coming in for you? I hear two things instantly. I heard June and then I heard August, September. So these are the timelines. Now with timelines, this could mean one person's coming in in June and another person will come in in August, September, or somebody's coming in in June and it will take off in August, September. I'm going to look a little bit more closely at this. Let's see what we can get. Okay, there's definitely somebody coming in in June. This person is a little, and they're using the word mischievous. But, oh, I apologize. Wow. This person is mischievous in a way that you can't resist them at first. <laughs> what? Why? Here for a minute. <laughs> why? Why does that happen? Why do we? Why do we drats? Why do we fall into that hole every time? Okay, so what I'm getting is um, the person coming in in June. Your okay. This is what I like to call. Um, uh, don't be offended, and please nobody be offended by this. It's a crash test, dummy. Okay, <laughs> the person coming in in June is somebody that is, okay, you asked for this. Do you really want it? Are you going to see the red flags? Or are you just going to keep driving down that road right into the wall? Um, this person is here to kind of come in and test. Are you willing to settle? Are you willing to put up with? Um, I feel like this situation will go for approximately four weeks, hopefully no longer than that. It's going to take you a moment to see through this person or decipher some of their behaviors. So, of course, I always say it, spirit always say, says it in the beginning of a relationship, kind of go slow, go a little bit slow. and. Don't go into it, and we do this as women. We oh, we really do this as women. We own this like a Prada bag. I I don't own a Prada bag. I don't want a Prada bag. It just came out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> we do this. Does he want me? Uh, wh what can I do to make this person want me? Uh, is he going to choose me? I is it going to work out? Uh, is this is this the one? Instead of going into it like. Is he the one for me? Do I want him? Am I seeing the things I need to see about this person? We go into it from the end of we're being interviewed for a, a like a seven figure job rather than we're interviewing somebody to work for us. And we have to switch that around. I know how difficult that can be, but we really do have to switch that around because when we're going into it like... Um, an inter like like do they want us we're not looking at who they are or how they're treating us or how they behave instead we're just looking at what can i do to present myself in the best way and men don't even always or you know pick people who present themselves in the best way they pick somebody who's energetically aligned with them or will put up with them Whew, that is a good yeah. line. Oh my God, I love that message. <laughs> Men pick people who are energetically aligned with them or will put up with them. So, up with them. That, that, that part about putting up with them, yeah. Yes, because we may not, and let me say this it goes for men and women. We may not be energetically aligned with someone. But if they will either A, put up with us, or we think there's something we want there, we will deal with that person, right? But we have yeah. to also look at, is this what going in, especially in the beginning of a relationship before we start to romanticize, fantasize, catch feelings, or think about a future with this person, we have to look at who they really are right here, right now. 
who are they showing up as? And we have to be willing, and a lot of us are not, because we don't want to go through the dating process because, you know, it's just not as glorified for some women as it is for men. Men tend to have a lot of the power and control in dating and women show up and we feel like we're just, are they going to pick me or not? But here's the thing. If we can just sit back and really look at who this person is and how they're treating us instead of worrying about if they want us, like what's their character? What, what are they, um, what are they uh, bringing as far as what they want in the future or how they treat us, then the whole dynamic changes for us. And we don't go into that situation where we are so many months in, we now have feelings and we never looked at this person clearly. And we're just all the things we thought, well, you know, I don't want to judge him. I don't want to think this. I don't want to think that. Oh, maybe he didn't mean it that way. If we look at those things and say, mm, no, I don't like that. I'm not putting up with it. The, another person will come and they will be a better person. Or, you know, if they're not, another person will come. There are millions upon millions upon them, millions of people in this world. Okay. And the, the idea is before we get invested emotionally, we look at this person psychologically. OK, that is the best thing yeah. everybody can do in dating before we look at this person emotionally. And one of the tips I always tell everybody, whether you're a man, a woman, look at this person and ask yourself, would I let them be with the person I love the most? So if you have a niece, a daughter, a sister, your mom, whoever you love, date them like you are interviewing them for that person. Ah, and now the game has changed because it's no longer <laughs> about us and us yeah. settling. Now we're saying, I would never let this person be with, I would never let this person be with my niece. They are for the streets and they need to return to the streets. We would, If we would never let people that we love we would never want them to be with this person. We should never be with this person. Now I'm going to tell you this. The person in June coming in is a test person. And you're going to think I'm wrong. You're, And that's okay. That's okay. It's intentional. They want you to really have to question who this person is, which means you're really going to have to pull out your discernment and your is this a red flag? Is this okay? And again, just divert or fall back on, would this person be good enough for, and then whomever you love the most, okay? Now, once you're through okay. with this person and you finally get, see, because this person is a little mischievous and this person is going to be able to, um, hide, uh, 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 like not show you everything up front. This person is pretty good at like not saying the wrong thing or letting you talk or whatever it is so that you don't see those um, like flags so quickly. Um, but once you do and you, you step out of this, right in that August time, and if I'm naming a date, I see August 17th, and then August 28th. So you might, you know, whatever that means for you, those could just be really good dates for you. Um, somebody else is going to come in. Okay. And that person has the potential to go very, very, very far. Now, I know a lot of people will say, well, then I don't want to deal with the June person. Well, sometimes we have to. Sometimes we have to like see those things to know we don't want those things. Or sometimes we just have to get through that person to get through the next person. Um, and I will tell you this personally, I have learned this. If we don't learn that lesson from 
a stranger or a potential partner, we will learn it from a family member or a friend. So better to learn it from from a, a, a dating person that we never have to talk to again if we don't want to. I know that sounds cruel. It's not cruel, though. It's really not. I would rather have all the tests come from stranger danger than family that you have to live with forever. So whatever that's worth, everybody, whatever that's worth. Um So that's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to say to you. Those are your potential timelines. Timelines can change a little bit. And I hope this is helpful. Now, the person coming in in August into September, it's one person. It's not two different people. And it might be that you have the, the opportunity to meet this particular person on the 17th or the 20th whatever the other date was, I, I think it was, a. I keep seeing the 28th now, if that's the same date, I hope so. Uh, it might be you meet them on one of those dates or you meet them on one of the dates and date them on, you know, your first real connection or whatever is the second date, whatever it is, that has the potential to go very far and to be a long lasting, very loving relationship. Let's keep in mind, I can't control the actions of you or anybody else. So if there is self-sabotage, I would not be able to stop that. But at this point, that looks pretty good for everybody involved. Okay, sweetie? Okay, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Love you, Tony. Oh, thank you so much. I love you, too. And you have an amazing rest of the day. And um, I look forward to you calling back and keeping us posted on all of this, okay? I sure will. Thank you. You are welcome. I'm going to do the first clearing of the show. And I want to thank Mimi again for going back through all of the shows and doing timestamps on clearing. And this this clearing was um, uh, because of the last caller. So thank you so much. And <clears throat> this clearing is going to be for self-sabotage, all self-sabotage in every single area of our le- life for beliefs, uh, programs, patterns, um, has been cleared, healed, and released. I get a note. Let's do that now. (laughs) Ah, gosh, guys, that is a good, that's a goodie. Okay. 805, you are next. So please don't go anyplace. I'm going to go. There's a question on the chat and the question is, Sally would like to know when will my brother, I think his name is Curly, I'm sorry, Curly come back to visit. And I hear a month, I hear a month of Sally. The first thing I heard is a month, so approximately a month, um, in a month, approximately a month, okay? Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, and if you didn't get through, if you didn't get your answer questioned, I'm so sorry. Please join me again Wednesday. I love each and every one of you so much. And remember, it's your job to create the miracles in your life. So go, go make miracles today. Go just make a miracle, whatever that looks like for you. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here.